Bank of America delivers an upside earnings surprise with a stock of over 3.5% in pre-market trading. The IMF says Europe will enter a mild recession in 2012 and lowers its global growth forecasts. And Kodak files for bankruptcy. I'm Alex Steele and The Morning Call starts right now. Good morning. I'm Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Alex Dew with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. All right, Scott, stocks had a very big day on Wednesday. S&P closing above 1,300, first time since July. Can Bank of America's rally today, for example, really add a lot more fuel to this fire? I think it definitely helps. We've been talking about this methodical move ever since the end of December, ever since that December 20th gap and go. And the one thing we were missing was a bit of momentum. And now after yesterday's upside move and maybe some help from the banks, I think mm. people are starting to believe in this rally more. And when people believe in it more and you get more participation, you get momentum. And then that's when things get a bit more interesting. But does that also mean that we could be then approaching some overbought territory then? Yes. You know, we've had a nice move. My target for the S&P for the first quarter this year, 1320, 1340. A lot of people laughed when we were at 1260 going into the end of the year. But I do think there's more room. I think you have to be a bit more methodical. Not everything mm -hmm. is going to go. It's been a very stock pickers type of environment where you could pick and choose your spots. You can add tiers based on you know the chart pattern and the position. So at this point, just don't get overly excited and start putting all your money to work. But you definitely have to have a plan and stay with it because there's been a lot of money out there this year for the active trader and for the investor. So looking at the charts then, what's a level of support, say, that you, that you think that traders would want to defend, investors would want to defend if we kind of sell off here? Well, we have two ways to look at it. We now have this ascending channel that we're going to ride and stay with until it breaks. So we're going to look at levels that if we close below, maybe we lose a little momentum. And then we're going to look at resistance areas that as we continue forward, where would you need to maybe take some off? So if you look here at the chart of the S&P, you will see you know, this is the pattern. This, this is a series of higher lows. The October low, the, the November higher low, the December higher low. This is when we broke this recent downtrend. And ever since this, we've been having a nice methodical move riding this uptrend. And we've, we've protected it each and every time. The next level of resistance to me is about 1318 to 1320 and then almost as high as 1350. So I do think we have this room left to go. And then as long as we continue to, to ride this uptrend, which I tried to draw here yesterday, I think you stay with this rally. And once we finally get maybe a move and close below it as we keep trailing it higher, then you take some off and then you figure out if we can make perhaps another higher low at some particular point after some corrective activity. But right now, I think you know, all, all cylinders are running. Because there are some things that still concern me. I mean, the dollar index is still very high. I mean, for as long as we're still around that $80 level, that's very high and that could be a negative for stocks. So sort of will it um, sell off to catch up to stocks rally or is it going to at some point weigh on stocks? We also have bondhold, private bondholders for Greece unable to come to some kind of agreement about the haircut they're going to take. I don't know. I'm a little worried. Well, I'm watching the price action and there are definitely some worries out there and everything you just mentioned definitely should keep you up a little bit at night, especially if you're all in. Mm. That's why you can't be really all in right now. You could hold multiple positions, 8 to 12. I don't think anything more than that. Otherwise, you can't control it. But have a hedge on. You know, yesterday, for the first time, I started buying a little VIX just to have, you know, just to help with all my longs because you always want to buy insurance for a hurricane potentially right. before it hits. It's cheaper. And also, I'm holding like a diamond short. But ultimately, I'm net-net long, and I'm trying to trade around the positions. And as long as we absorb these complicated headlines and the price action remains the way it is to the upside, you know, then you have to stay the course. And if all of a sudden we get a really bad auction or Greece does do a hard orderly default and we gap down and you know, there are no dip buyers, which we've seen dip buyers every time we've gapped down for the last month, then you change gears. You, look, you lighten up a little bit, and then you figure out the next compelling spot to get involved. I know that a compelling sector for you recently has been high beta tech. So let's go there to see what the opportunities are. In particular, I want to start with Netflix. You've been <laughs> trading that, kind of sitting on it, waiting on it. It's running into earnings, though. So wh what are you thinking about the stock? Netflix has been the perfect active trader's dream. Mm. You know, it got battered and bruised. It beat everybody up last year when finally it broke its uptrend to 250, went all the way down to the low 70s, had a nice lower base. And there's been like three or four really good trades in the last two weeks. So if you look here at the chart of Netflix, you know, it woke up when it ignited above this recent downtrend. It's so heavily shorted. This was the first time to get involved right around about 75. We listed it here on Morning Call on the price point sheet. 
then it flagged and continued. And now you have another nice consolidation here. This looks good. I am long some. I'd love to see it rest another day or so, but if it doesn't, I'll be adding above 99.60, and I think we see a big portion of this gap filled, and it could see 110 to 115 on that day when it comes into that gap. Do you feel that the chart patterns are showing that it's uh, all the shorts are out of the market right now? Have they already covered? No, <laughs> they still have to cover. So, you right, know, and we've stuff. been absor absorbing bad news. Yesterday, Netflix got downgraded. I think it got downgraded two days before then we absorbed it. Imagine you get a little good news out of Netflix, what's going to happen to those shorties in there. All right, I also want to hit on Amazon because that stock was at more than 4% yesterday. I wonder how much room there is. We had some mixed results from eBay. Guidance was light for Q1 and 2012, but we had a pretty solid quarter. Uh, the big thing was I saw that gross merchandising volume was a bit light. Well, we'll see. So I wonder how that trickle down. Basically, we'll see where we are as we get closer to their earnings. Mm -hmm. But technically, as a trade, it was awesome yesterday. We've talked about this descending channel to the downside. Goldman Sachs a week or so ago downgraded it; it couldn't go lower, a sign that it was washed out and oversold enough to go up. You look here at the, the chart pattern here. You had two nice trades. First of all, here's the descending channel that came right into this lower level support. This was the day that Goldman Sachs downgraded and couldn't go down. Then yesterday, we drew this line. I said, if, if Amazon can get above 183, 184, you're going to see a quick move to 190. And we went to 190. So now at this particular point, you know, maybe a, a sideways day, but if we get above yesterday's high of this like 190 area, you could see 195 to 200 before you get some more resistance. So overall, from the last quarter, it's been a broken technical stock, but for the active trader, you've had some you know, three nice days in a row, and you've been able to make some nice cash flow. All right, let's go to Apple, another stock that was really killing it yesterday, you know, closing on 52-week highs. Do you need to start taking some off the table into earnings? We had RBC having that price target upgrade yesterday, um, saying that they're expecting stronger iPhone sales. And is it time to start looking at the derivative plays, you know, like the Qualcomm's, the Broadcom, the TriQuint, that aren't at their 52-week highs? Well, Apple's been one of those, if you're a macro investor, obviously know your time frame because if you've been holding this thing, you've, you would stand you know, some corrections, but mm -hmm. every time, every sell right now has been a bad sell considering it's at historic highs. You know, about a month ago, we had a cute short you know, after the earnings and then it held the 200 day. In the last month, we talked about this pivot to buy above 395. I'll show you right here. This is when I got back involved, Apple, when it broke this downtrend. When it broke above this recent area, this is when I started to be net long this once again after this methodical move lower to, to hold this 200 day. And now I'm still long it. You had a nice little break. It broke above you know, the, the old time highs. I'm going to stay with it. I'll, I'll probably take off my Apple position because I'm a trader into earnings, maybe close to 435, and then figure out if there's an option play that right. I could do into earnings to be involved. But if you're an investor, you know, it depends on your time frame. If you've been in it for a long term and you plan to be in it for a long term, I think Apple Overall, it's going to be 500 plus this year. And taking options into earnings, let's go to Google, just reiterating your option call play into the, into the print this afternoon. Well, Google, my, my play of the year, it's so funny, people are so fickle, like, you, you've been dead wrong, Google's not the stock of 2012. I'm like, we're two weeks into 2012. <laughs> but uh, it was a good trade going into 2012, because if you look at the chart here, above 636, which was the pivot, was right here, you know, it was a great trade, you got 30 points. And for me, I, anytime I get 20 points or plus, I take it. So I actually sold some, not knowing we were going to get three downgrades in a row to bring it back to support. But overall, we, we held the 50-day. You know, it, it remained above. You have a low, a higher low, another higher low. In the 625 area, I did buy the, the, the what was it, the calls that expire on Friday right. at the 650s. So tomorrow, we're at the close. I'm probably going to add to it because I think a lot of people's expectations are really low for Google. So if they come in with a good report, we take out this 670 high, and you'll make some money with the options. And very quickly, you know, 15 seconds here, we had Baidu not participating in this rally yesterday down 2%. Does it have catch-up potential? It seems like every time these stocks take a day or two of a break, they, th they then start to go the day after. So I'm going to watch Baidu real quickly. You know, if, if Baidu could start getting above this downtrend of about 130 or so, I think it starts to wake up at this particular point. It's still just a trade, and we have to see a little bit more data here, but I think this one is still in the game also. All right, and we're going to be right back talking about the oil sector right after this, so stay with us. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side. 
All right, here we go. We're going to get into the trenches with oil. Now, Scott, we have oil prices are kind of a mixed bag right now. You know, we're trading in that range 96 to 103. Yesterday, we had the International Energy Agency revising its global demand forecast for oil down to 1.1 million barrels a day from 1.3. But on the flip side, we're seeing China saying that its five largest banks should lend about 5% more in the first quarter. That's going to be good for imports, right? So if you look at the OIHs, the oil services, they're, pr they're pretty strong right now. Oil prices are kind of flatlining here. Wh which one leads? Do oil services huh. catch up uh, to, to oil prices in a downward way, or do oil prices catch up to oil services? Well, we've been watching this group, and we wanted to see how it would act going into 2012. A lot of fundamental individuals out there say that all oil needs to do is stay above 90 mm. and these guys can make a lot of money. Obviously psychologically it seems like every time oil goes up these go with it but it doesn't really affect them as much. I think as long as oil stays below 110 psychologically it's good for the market. If it stays in this sweet spot I think these, this group could do much better and yesterday finally the OAHs woke up a little bit. You know, if you recall, last year, last year, last year, it was last year, about a month ago, yeah. we had that inverted head and shoulders yeah. pattern. Jim Cramer went over it on his show, and I talked about a tier one buy. Well, yesterday was the first time I went into a tier two in this hmm. group. All right, so then what about, would you rather play the OIHs versus, say, the individual stocks? Because we do have Schlumberger reporting tomorrow. It was up 4% uh, yesterday. Expectations are pretty good. They have a good global share of deep water markets, about 60%. That's where a lot of the growth is going to come from. But it's one of the most expensive in the sector. So how do you manage the stock like that? Well, it all depends on your risk. If you're an investor and you're not really watching, you know what, just buy the OHs, you won't make as much as you would make in individual stocks, but you'd have exposure to the group. If you look here at the chart of the OHs before we go to Schlumberger, you will see this was that inverted head and shoulders pattern. The left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder, I believe, you know, on uh, Mad Money, we talked about it right around here as being a tier one. And then yesterday, finally, look at this nice wide range bar, took back the moving average. This is when I went into tier two. So I do think that this can continue, and the next big resistance is going to be around 130. And if you look at Schlumberger, Stock's actually been lagging until yesterday. Mm. Finally, it had a nice day. It, it held support, hasn't been participating in this rally. But whenever you see a day like you saw yesterday in Schlumberger that almost engulfed this entire range, it looks like people wanted to get involved and buy it. So if you're in it and you like the company, you'll stay with it for earnings. For me, I'm not going to own it into earnings, but I'd love to see a nice report and a move to resistance around 75, 76, because that'll help my OAH position. And I know Stephanie Link, Director of Research for The Street, who co-manages Action Lords Plus with Jim Cramer, has this rated as buy one on her stocks. This is a, on her list of stocks to buy. This is definitely one of them. I might call her then, because I'll get involved in earnings. There you go. <laughs> All right, so then uh, let's go to some of the um, oil and gas stocks, say EOG and Oxy. Uh, do those make good buys here then when we're seeing oil still in this range above 90, as you said? Both of these stocks are showing better patterns than Schlumberger. They're near mm. the highs. They're showing relative strength. This is what traders are flocking to. If you look at EOG, you will see it's well above you know, all these moving averages. It's near the highs and trying to get above it. I think if EOG can get above this 106, 107 area, you're going to see a breakout in EOG. And if you look at Oxy, kind of similar where it's above all the moving averages right here. You know, it's well off those lows, like not some of the other ones. And if this could get through this 101, 102 and hold above it, you know, you could see an extension on this Oxy to, you know, at least 105, 110 pretty quick. This is a very strong price pattern here in Oxy. So would Oxy and EOG be more trades, but maybe a Schlumberger more of a long-term investment then, would you say? Well, if you, were, charts? if you were a long-term investor in Oxy and EOG, you're getting more rewarded yeah. than the investor in Schlumberger because it's been lower. But now you didn't own any of them. Right. It's more of a trade now for mm -hmm. those that aren't involved. If you're an investor, just stay the course. Perhaps if you're right on SLB and you want to be a market timer and fundamentally they, they, they hit the ball out or not even hit the ball out because I don't think there's much expectations in there considering where the stock is, you probably have it from a good price, but I would only be in tier one there. All right. Let's wrap it up here with Exxon, the big integrated <laughs> here. Uh, is there a trade? Has that juicy dividend? I'll tell you, this stock has been unbelievable to trade with patterns. People say, mm -hmm. oh, I can't trade Exxon. I'm like, why not? If you look here at the chart, it's been unbelievable. Look at the last time we, we spoke about this, Alex, last October. Look at this resistance. It doesn't get much more textbook than this. It finally broke above this 74. It had a big move to 82, right? Look at that. Pulled back, retested this breakout, came back up to resistance. It held it for a little while. Then you had another trade above this 81, 82. Now look at it again. Holding sideways, holding hires, above all the moving averages. This stock gets above 87 or so. You could see a stock on its way to 100. It's technically acting very, very good. All right, let's go to some other quick ways to make some cash today. Very quickly, Scott Wynn had another big run yesterday. Hey, trading has been a great <laughs> trade for you. I've been long since Friday at around 110, added to 112. 
I think we can get to 120, but I did sell most of my shares yesterday. If you're still in a tier two, get to a tier one, but overall it could go higher than that. And Crot's up 4% yesterday. That was on some private equity buyout rumors. Although Brian Ashenberg, who runs a breakout stock portfolio for the street, said those rumors are totally overdone because they would have bought when Crot's was at its lows instead of now. Well, I'd say the pattern looks good. They had earnings. You have a nice bull flag here. Just got to show you real quick whether it's a takeover target or not. I like the pattern here. I bought some yesterday in this flag. It couldn't come in after that earnings, that nice gap. Above 1950, you're going to see the stock go north of 20. And Molly Corp up 3%. You're trading it. What are you doing today? MCP's holding up just fine. I don't know that price pattern, so I have to put it in up here, or the price point. Here's that nice flag pattern after breaking this downtrend above 33.50, and this thing could see 35 pretty quick, especially since metals are starting to go up a little bit. What about Green Mountain Coffee? Do we still have more short covering we could see here? Yes, remember mm. you brought that to our attention as a heavily shorted stock in that segment, Trash for Treasure, yeah. and, and it's doing really <laughs> well. I think, no, I still think that that one can get squeezed up to uh, what I have written down here for Green Mountain Coffee. I had 55 to 57. All right, let's go to the banks very quickly. Morgan Stanley up 2% in pre-market, reported a loss of 14 cents a share this morning. That was much better than expected. Revenue coming in at about 5.71 billion. Are you trading this name or going to stick with the XLF? I'm going to stick with the XLF. I went long it yesterday to have bank exposure. I'd love to see Bank of America hold above 7, 7, 10. If it does so. Uh, Morgan Stanley. Oh, Morgan Stanley. That yeah. too. Okay, that, that was up like, I think, oh, Let's start Morgan Stanley a nice first, percentage. Yeah. I didn't even look at that chart, but this chart looks, look, it looks pretty good. On the Goldman Sachs news yesterday, it engulfed this little range here. I do think the next point of resistance here for Morgan Stanley would be about 1950. I haven't been really trading Morgan Stanley, but it does look good for higher prices with some of the other banks. And now we're going to finish off with Bank <laughs> of America here, up over 5% in pre-market trading. Deliver earnings, 15 cents a share revenue, 25.15 billion. We have a great trading video on the street about this stock. What are you doing? I'm going to avoid Bank of America, but I think it would be healthy for the market if it could hold above this pivot here around 706. If you look at the chart, you will see this is the pivot that held the stock a few days back around 705. We're above that now. We stay above this. It could easily see this pivot point here of about 743. And overall, for health-wise for the market, it starts to stay above 7, builds a new floor. This thing could see 857 at some point pretty soon. And then wrapping it up with gold, Scott, you told me yesterday that gold's, bound, that gold's rally has been um, sort of short covering rally here, technical, nothing real going on here. You wouldn't be getting interested as a momentum trade yet. You changing your mind? Not yet. Okay. So it's going to be brushing up against a really big downtrend very soon. I think if you played it for an oversold bounce, take your money and run. If you covered your shorts like we talked about until the end of the year, Good job, you weren't a pig. But now if you look right here at the GLD, you will see there's a, there's a pretty big downtrend coming into play here. This was the high you know, of, of the summer. You know, It followed it all the way here where you have a, a high, a lower high, a lower high. And now this is where we are around 160, 160. So there is a bit more, a bit more room here. But this 165 is going to be big resistance. So let's see how it handles that zone. If you're in it for one more trade, I would be a seller in front of that. And then we'll see how it acts. Maybe you could short that downtrend once again. All right, so gold still definitely has a little bit more to prove. That's it for us for today. Happy trading. I'm Alex Steele from The Street. And I'm Scott Redler from T3. Make sure to tune in to the radio in the chat. There's a lot of action going on intraday, a lot of volume spurts. And we'll help uncover it for you.